everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. It's been a long fortnight of anticipation, but kickoff of Super Bowl 51 is just about upon us. For these players and coaches, it's the culmination of a lifetime of dreams. Which team will lift the Lombardi Trophy? We're about to find out. It's the Steelers going up against the Rams. So the time has come. Let's send you out to the stadium and join the two men that will have the Super Bowl call. Here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, they broke ground on this place in the year 2000, opened it in August of 2002, and it's been the home of this franchise ever since. Welcome to NRG Stadium in Houston. We count down to kickoff in what should be an epic one here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it is our extreme privilege to be on hand for the Super Bowl. And I can't help but look down on this field, partner, and think about the history of this game and all the great players, all the great teams that have stood on the field for this moment so special. This game is so historic that while we call it the Super Bowl now, that wasn't even the name of the first couple. It's the AFL NFL World Championship game before the Super Bowl really took hold. And think about the Green Bay Packers winning the first two that got us kicked off and started towards where we are today. And with the whole world watching at the end of this game, at the end of tonight, one of these two sides, they get to etch their name in NFL immortality. No doubt about it. They hold up the ultimate symbol of victory in this league, the Lombardi Trophy. We begin the next half century of Super Bowls to a strobe of flashes. Super Bowl 51 from Houston is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. Oh, the spin. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. And leading him out, a man who is certainly no stranger to this stage, starting his fourth Super Bowl at quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. And every quarterback wants to be perfect in the Super Bowl. But two and one as a starter in the Super Bowl is not bad at all. Won his first two, lost his third in a tough one against Green Bay in Arlington, Texas. And he wants to break a little bit of that Texas schneid here in Houston. Try and get his third Super Bowl ring. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And a lot of the weight of this offense falls on the shoulders of the running back. That's because the offense knows if they give him any openings, any opportunities, he can turn it into a big play at any time. On second down, it's Bell. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. The tackle by Robert Quinn. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. When Brian Arakpo was born, there was no doubt that with that name, he was going to be a defensive player and a good one. He knows how to get to quarterbacks. 
Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. So pass interference on the defense, and Charles, this is a penalty we see all the time. The offenses know what they're doing. They know how to create great matchups, and defenders, if you're not there in time, they will throw the flag. After the penalty, it's Bell, and the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. David Amerson able to bring him down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Well, there was no blitz. That was just a draw play that, to be frank, didn't fool anybody. Did we hear the entire stadium screaming draw? Because <laughs> they, it felt they like saw everybody it. was all over that play, and the defense won that battle. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. <laughs> On third down, Roethlisberger. He completes it to Bryant. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Roethlisberger will throw. Man open left side is Brown. A gain of six there on first. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And the hook up here to Allen Robinson. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. A first carry now. This is Williams. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now whistles here before the snap, and it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. He's able to get six, a nice pick up down to the 21. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. And this is caught at the eight. And eventually brought down, but it's near the five at the six. Well, we saw the practice film this week. They wanted to focus on these intermediate passing plays, and it paid off there. And they took that focus not just to the practice field, but in the film room to show the guys exactly what they wanted, what types of looks they should expect to get, and how they would beat those coverages each and every time, and it paid off on that play. 
And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. So you heard the word. This is a neutral zone infraction. Yeah, the defender wanted to try and get back after he had jumped. Unable to do so. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he floated one out there incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the former Rice Al Boswell puts this one through in his return to Houston. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So a 15-play drive. Can't believe that only resulted in three, but it did. That is somewhat amazing, isn't it? When you hold the ball that long, run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? it has to. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. And they'll be let out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline, his father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. Luck on first down. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now it's the Chiefs' all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback. But he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has. Able to play the run and the pass so well. Here's Locke. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. 
And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. A little tough on the secondary there in zone defensively. Quarterback had time to survey and find a spot. And if you want to change things up and put a little more pressure on him, you can go to man coverage. Everyone matches up and send more pressure. But you can also do it out of zone coverage if you're worried about what's going to happen on your back end. Send someone else, drop someone else out of the line. The old zone blitz could come into play to try and get that pressure on the quarterback. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. They go play action here on first down. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 13 yards there on the pickup. And the Rams are going to get a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defensive so well, doesn't he? He really does. And the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Denora Searcy in on the stop. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. On second down, here's Locke. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Trey Mason, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Rams are going to take a first-quarter lead. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. The wheel round? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver as they zip out on the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. And he knocks it through. So this drive spans seven plays, and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash this <laughs> Super <laughs> From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Goes underneath for Bell. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Three yards remaining here on second down. So one quarter down here in Super Bowl 51. 7-3 the score. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Here we go. 
On second down, Roethlisberger. And complete to Zach Ertz. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Allen Robinson, 41 yards. And the Steelers are going to retake the lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. But well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. Hey, that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? Just go long, <laughs> man. Yard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. A first down carry here for Charles. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On second down, Jamal Charles trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And he's got his man, Hilton. A really nice gain of 25 yards. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They'll hand it off. This is Charles. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. It's the pro bowler, Jamie Collins, that makes the stop. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Throwing on third down. Luck. A dump off for Mason. 
And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh shot of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. From the red zone now, Locke. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They go back to the ground now with Charles. They'll say no gain on the play, so it was looking good, but nothing there, and now it's third down and inches. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Block on third down. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Julius Thomas, a five-yard touchdown. And the Rams are once again going to retake the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked-up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. A 10-play drive that time. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Rams' defense, they make their way back out there now. Obviously a close game from the defensive standpoint. Maybe don't want to blow it too much out of proportion, but how important is this drive? I think it's huge for them because they've got to find a way to help out their offense, whether it's doing it themselves, taking the ball away and scoring, or setting their offense up in a good position to give them a chance to fully be back in this game. Sometimes that defense triggers the offense. We'll see. It'll go as a gain of 10 there. And it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They come out here in the eye. They'll run it with Bell. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Aaron Donald's secret, if there is one, to his play, his ability to contort his body in such a way that you can't get a good, clean block on it. He slides through holes and slides past blockers and makes plays just as we saw there. Now Roethlisberger over the middle here to Coates. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. So completion on second down, that brings up third. From the gun on third down, it's Raffelsberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. On now the Steelers' second-year punter. This is Australian-born Jordan Berry. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin.
And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Andrew Luck now, he gears up to lead this offense again. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was just saying, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. On second down, here's Locke. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up the third down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. Now Luck. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. Khalil Mack in there to drop him. And he continues to wreak havoc in offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So the Rams call on Johnny Hecker here to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. With it is Brown. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way. And they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field. Try to make sure his teammates come along with him. And he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And ready now for second and nine. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Super Bowl 51 after this. A reminder coming up at the intermission. We'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Larry Ridley and the crew in Orlando with our EA Sports halftime report. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. And now they're in the hurry up. Now Ben on third and long. He's got time. Ertz has it left side. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Jordan Berry now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. 
He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. And now here comes the Steelers' defense once more. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? The three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here. See if they can force another three and out. On first down, Locke to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. The throw on second down is locked. Over the middle, open is Thomas. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a first down throw, Locke. Over the middle to Beckham. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Now hold everything here, we're gonna get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. On first and ten, Locke. And that'll be incomplete. The tight end, Julius Thomas, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Second and 10, luck again. Finding time. He's going to air one out. That's caught inside the 20. A big play there just before halftime. 41 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes, just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Luck throwing again. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. So as the set designers rush out here to get us ready for the spectacle to come at intermission, these two teams will head to the locker room in Super Bowl 51 from Houston. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Late in the first quarter, the pass will be completed into coverage, and he caps off the seven-play drive with a score. Rams go up by four. First and ten, Roethlisberger's got the completion here, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. Steelers go up by three. Third down from inside the ten, the pass will be completed into coverage, and after the short pass, he'll score. The lead grows to four. Set up now, third and seven. They're gonna come away with another sack. This one ends up as a loss of six.
So that'll do it from here in Orlando. The second half of Super Bowl 51 still to come as we rejoin Brandon and Charles in Houston. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Partner, I think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs. But I've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball, it doesn't work running the ball, and then something pops, and now you get something going. I'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That was a nice pickup. Some chunk yardage there. Some of those big yards downfield with a little bit of rack thrown in there, a little run after catch. And it came on a crossing route. I can just hear one of my friends who won four Super Bowls as a quarterback always said the same thing. What route does the defense hate? Crossing route. Hate it, hate it, hate it, because it's hard to change direction when they get going full speed in the other way. Hilton, the lone receiver right. On first down, it's long. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. On second down, here's Lump. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Trey Mason, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Rams add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. The Rams defense getting ready to go again. They're just hoping for more of the same last time they forced the punt that led to a score. They flipped the field essentially, and that's what you want to do as a defense. Make sure that you put your offense in a great position to run their offense and put the ball in the end zone. That's exactly what they accomplished. Yeah, they accomplished that last time. What will they accomplish this go around? On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. Bryant with a catch right side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 10 yards on the pick up there. And that'll be good for Pittsburgh first. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? This is Bell, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, second down. 
no gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. So the offense has it first and 10. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Out left side here to Bryant. And he showed some fancy footwork on the juke, but then quickly taken down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. They come up with one running back, that's Bell. A fake to Bell, now it's Roethlisberger. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is, that's a pass he's gotta have and a pass he should have caught. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. On third down, Roethlisberger. He's got time in the pocket. Brought in by Coates. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Well, it wasn't a big strike. But that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, You've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter, get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. So the run gets him the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. But we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. On first down, it's Charles again. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it's the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. A uh, nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. Partner, we know today's NFL really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. The Rams defense heading back onto the field. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt well, Maybe you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. <laughs> Robinson's got it. And he's brought down after a good game. It goes as a pickup of 23. And it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Give him eight on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now it's Roethlisberger, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Second and 10 now, it's Roethlisberger surveying the field to the sideline and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds and they were. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Can you do any more work and make it more dramatic for not much game than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip tap, tip tap, got him down. Now been hit and he lost the football, it's loose. Plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. This is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They go play action here on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. On second and 10, Locke. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. So the offense needing four yards, it's third down. Yeah. 
One quarter remains in Super Bowl 51. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Rams out in front here. They've got control of the football as well as we get set for the fourth quarter. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. From the gun on third down, Luck. He's got time. A dump off for Mason. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a handoff. This is Charles. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It'll go as a gain of 10 there. And it'll be a Los Angeles first down. It'll be Charles again. He has been the workhorse tonight. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Right back to Cooper, and he got him again. That throw good for four. It's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now Luck. This will be caught just inside the 10. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Throwing again is Locke. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Julius Thomas, his second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Rams add on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Zerline now for the PAT. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. kickoff team on the field and here we go with the ball in the air this one fielded at the five. Oh, look at that oh, look at him turn and a good effort on the return there gets him across the 30 to the 33 yard line They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. 
And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. down it's Roethlisberger it's over the middle that throw good for four it's second down there's a good place to the tight end and I think that we're looking at something out central casting frankly absolutely I mean size the hands speed I mean can flat out run you put that whole package together you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator don't you second down now after the pass completion one receiver left, three to the right. On second down, Roethlisberger. And this one caught by Coates. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. He finds Coates complete. For just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he's brought down. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. And he was able to find a very soft spot in that zone coverage. I love that term, Brandon. That soft spot where you find the open area, set up, and catch the football before the hard collision comes afterwards. And he'll take this one down to the 36. A gain of three, second down. Now it's second and seven. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because then you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Here we go. It's Roethlisberger on fourth down. And this is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? Well, I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. Let's go. 
Again, we'll see the pistol here. Again, it's Charles. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why their points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. Time running out here on the play clock. This is Charles. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now a 20th carry here for Jamal Charles. Cuts it in. And he lost the football. Charles loses it. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. In today's NFL, most teams don't have as many goals for the game like we used to have where you checked off your boxes. But zero turnovers, that, that's a universal. And while it won't likely cost them in this game, they're going to regret the fact that they cough one up here. Yeah, their first blemish. They had mistake-free football prior. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own sideline. <laughs> well, now we'll see what his offense can do. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Ertz has it left side. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. And that's off the mark, incomplete. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. And it'll bring up third down. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger backing up. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Here's Jordan Berry now. As he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because Every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home, all right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. The former Bill, Mario Williams, on the stop. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The Rams have won the Super Bowl. And they will get the Lombardi Trophy. 
For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That, the task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.